Well, Ruben, there's only one place to start. Midweek, talk me through it. Uh, yeah, what do you want to know? Uh, uh, it was very, uh, as a player, very enjoyable to uh, to play a game like that and to win it. And uh, to score and be important for the team is, yeah, it's a good feeling. And uh, yeah, uh, it's one of the best games I've ever played. So uh, I'm happy. I'm happy for it. We'll talk about your goal in a minute, but I wasn't at the game. But am I right in saying that you nearly had you had the gloves before Michael Doyle? What, what happened quite there? So uh, we in the beginning of the season, like they said, we we made. Not like rules, but who was up for it if somebody, if the goalkeeper had read. And at that time, point of time, I wasn't playing, so I didn't put my hand up. And then when that happened and I was playing, I was like, like, I thought it was as a squad more important for Doyle to stay on because one man less. And so, and I, and like, I have an older brother and a younger brother, and we always used to play football, and I like to be in goal. So I thought, that I will be better in goal than Michael Doyle, but at the end it did work out great because I scored a goal and he kept us kept us alive. Yeah. Is there a little bit inside of you that's disappointed that you didn't get that that chance to be the outfield player in goal? <sighs> At the beginning, I really wanted to be in goal because it's like it's not like a dream or something, but it's like something you want to experience. But nah, it is. I was alright with it. Yeah, and, and like you say, not ma not many minutes later, you, you score a great goal. Just talk us through that. So yeah, uh, Enzio said it was uh, intentional to pass to me the header, but I, I still think it was a pass to Kyle. But that's right. But uh, yeah, he passed it to me, and I had a man on my right, and I just I just tried to turn away from him. And as soon as I turned away, I just was thinking one thing, and that's run through goal. And then I just did like. Um, a shoulder drop to my right and then two players it wasn't the best defending because they were just too wild and just I, I just went to the right and then I I hit it I hit a good shot I hit it well and then um, it it's worth a little bit but still in my opinion a good goalkeeper would have saved that what do you think the result says about the team you know the fact that you managed in all that adversity to to not just win a game but win a game comfortably yeah. uh, what does it say that we stick behind everybody, everybody does his job, everybody uh, wants to win the game. Um, everybody knows how important it is to, um, yeah, to, to work for each other and how easier it makes for yourself to, if you do the right thing, it, it gets way easier to uh, attack. And I think the lads that played last year and lost the final are showing the fans that they really want to win this year and they really want to promote. So I think that shows a lot of courage and yeah, everything really. How much do you think that hurt of last season is is continually driving people on? Like I wasn't here, so I don't know how that feels. But I see like Michael Doyle, he ah, every training, every game, he just wants to win. He tries to get the best out of you. Sometimes a bit too much, but we we accept it and we yeah we know that he is he is like that. But that he just does that because he wants to get the best out of us but you see that everybody just wants to win really you talked about enjoyment there and, and again looking from afar and, and catching glimpses that you can glimpse when you're not at games it seems like the players are enjoying having fun playing their football mm -hmm. yeah because uh, the gaffer like he wants us to play football he wants us to um um not uh, how you say um I say uh, I don't know how you say it, like be don't be afraid to to get the ball to just enjoy it have the ball uh, make something happen for the team fullbacks drive uh, white men always drive and not just play easy long balls to the striker so as a midfielder for me it's very enjoyable to 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 do that so yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of touch on my question. As a creative midfield player, one that enjoys being on the ball, it must be music to your ears to hear a manager say, I'm kind of giving you a bit of a license rather than like, you're going to have to be rigid or play this defensive mm -hmm. system. It must be something you love hearing. No, no, that, that's always nice, especially for players like me, uh, Enzio, uh, Jimmy, Eli. We like to, to run with the ball. We like to create things for the team. And 
when that's possible, that's very enjoyable. And I think last Tuesday, because we had a man less, they were more attacking. So we on the counter, we could break and yeah, we did it like almost every time we we break perfectly. So yeah, that was really enjoyable. Wonderful. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Ruben, um, talk us through. I know you obviously scored a, a, a fine goal. But, um, how highly would you rate that in your career? Have you scored many better? Uh, in my professional career, this was my best goal, yeah. Look, I, I now scored 15 goals professionally, and I can say that this was my uh, my best goal, yeah. And I, I mean, how, how how much are you enjoying being at Notts County? And just talk us through what it's been like for you to come from Dutch football into in, into what is quite an unforgiving and demanding league. In the beginning, it was it was tough. Also because I hadn't played for like nine for like eight eight seven months. So in the beginning, it was tough, and I had to get used to it. A new country without a family, but. Like, I live with Brins, Richard Brintley, and he is nice, and and he, yeah, we just get along with each other, so that makes it easier outside of football. Uh, in the squad, everybody's just being very nice, uh, helpful, and um, in terms of playing football, uh, in the beginning, it was a lot of, like, thinking more defendingly than attacking-wise, so that was, like, an adaption I had to make, but as you can see now, we are starting to win games, and also for a player like me, yeah, it's just very, very enjoyable. Winning games is like, is like, yeah, the best thing. Yeah. How how difficult was that transition to come from Dutch football to English football, and especially in a pandemic as well? I mean, mm-hmm. it's not entirely normal yeah. circumstances, I, is it? That's the most difficult part because the pandemics. Because normally you go out with it with a club and you drink some, you're having fun, and you get to know each other better on a on a different kind of vibe so that will make that will make it easier but because of the pandemic you just stay home being bored so i look, I always look forward to train or to be with the squad because that's the only time i have fun like with the with the players i have here so in the beginning it was very difficult but yeah everything goes good now so that's uh, most important I, uh, how how sort of, how did you sort of combat that? How did you get through it? I mean, we, I mean did you constantly phone back home, or I mean, because uh, did, did you get homesick at all during that period? Um, yeah, especially on like uh, Christmas and uh, uh, New Year's Eve and uh, New Year's. The, I think that that was the most difficult time because I was alone, because Richard went to uh, with of course with his missus, and I just sat alone uh, watching movies and having dinner with my own. So that was a difficult time, but how I got through it. I just play a lot of video games with my brothers. Uh, I call my mother. Online? Yeah, online. So we chat on that. I uh, FaceTime my mother like twice a week and uh, I just WhatsApp them as as much as I can. So I am homesick, of course, because I really miss them, but it is, it is, it is all right. I just had a hard time with Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, and um, I mean, people certainly uh, understand that. What what online games do you play with your brothers? Uh, FIFA, Call of Duty, Fortnite, those three games actually. Mm. And who's the best? Uh, Fortnite is my little brother, and FIFA and Call of Duty, I think it's me. <laughs> we don't play against you? each other, we play with each other, so... Yeah, yeah, on the same side. We make a good team. <laughs> yeah, how, how, old are, how old is your little brother? Uh, 18. And my oldest is uh, 26. So, and what, what are their names? Uh, Leandri and Patrick. Patrick. Can, can you spell that? Uh, so you say Leandro, Leandro is L-E-A-N-D-R-O. Yeah. And just Patrick. P-A-T-R-I-C-K. Right. Okay, lovely. And uh, how, how difficult has it been to, you know... I'm I'm interested to know really about the difficulties of the the physical demands of the national league. Was it was it a surprise when you uh, first started playing the games? Not like a surprise because I already knew that it's gonna be tough. But honestly, I just I, in the beginning I just wasn't ready for it because I was so long so long I I was still and like the seven months. I didn't do a lot to to make it easier for myself. So in the beginning it was very tough and. Everybody is big, but now I do some extra exercises with Enzio, uh, Carl Wooten and uh, Jimmy, and we do a lot of upper body, so everything is, is getting in place now. 
I mean, I, I personally thought that, that your performance on Tuesday was the fittest and sharpest you've looked since yeah, you've yeah. come to the club. I feel, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, yeah, it's fair because normally in the 70, 75th minute, 80th minute, I get, yeah, not tired, but my legs get a lot heavier. So, mm. but this time... I just don't know, maybe it was adrenaline as well because we had 10 men and everybody wanted to win that that they helped me through it. But yeah, this time I, I also ran a lot. So yeah, I was I felt good, I felt fit. And, and how far away would you say you are from peak fitness? Because obviously when you came into the side, a lot of the times you were getting substituted late mm -hmm. on, wasn't it? Because like you say, your legs were heavy, getting tired. I think I'm, I'm still not there. I think I'm like at 90, 95% of my... Fitness wise, I think I have to do a little bit more cardio to um, get the 90 minutes done and like good done because also uh, last Tuesday I had it done but it was tough. So if I can do that like 90 minutes every every week, then um, then it's very nice. But at the minute I'm at 90, 95 percent. Uh, how much are you missing the, the supporters? I mean, because obviously any new signing coming into a new club, yeah. you expect to be playing in front of the fans, etc. You know, that goal would have would have taken the mm -hmm. roof off. What, what's that been like to deal with as well? Yeah, difficult because even in, even like, if, even if it is like two, three thousand people, you still, you still feel it like, but and here, you know, it's like, I don't know, scenes I've seen from last year is like 10,000. So, I, I, we just miss them a lot and I just really want to play in front of them and just yeah, let them help us boost sometimes and just do well for them. Mm. And, and are you on social media at all? Yes, yes. Not on Twitter, but on uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram. I uh, see them some posts, yeah. Yeah, how, how can you not on Twitter? Is that just a, a personal choice? Or... Oh, I, I've never had Twitter. I don't know why. It's, nah, there's no reason why, actually, but yeah. And, and what's been the reaction back home after the goal on Tuesday night? Uh, did you get lots of congratulations from your brothers? And, yeah, and nah. Um, yeah, they were very proud of me, so it was nice. I uh, rang my mother after the game on Tuesday, and she was very happy. Yeah, my brother, little brother was there as well. So, nah, the family was very proud. So that's, uh, that makes me feel appreciated, and it, feel, it felt good, so that was nice. And, and how quickly are you hoping this pandemic sorts itself out so you can actually get them over here and take them around the tour of the stadium? As soon as possible, but I, I know that's not going to happen. So I just, I don't know, I'm just hoping that it gets done as soon as possible. Or, or at least that they can come here and at least see me, even though there is a pandemic. But uh, all the quarantine that comes with it, is, uh, it's difficult. Mm. Uh, and in terms of the football um Obviously, great momentum at the moment. Two defeats in the last 15 games. What, just sum up the mood for us in the dressing room at the moment. Uh, the, mood, the mood is always good. Always everybody bantering with each other. Music is on. Uh, everybody's smiling. The mood is always good. But as soon as the game starts, you see that we're still on each other. And that everybody is not uh, thinking easy because we won a lot of games. Everybody is still wanting more, wanting more. Everybody is hungry. So, nah, we are... We all want the same, and that's that's the promotion. So yeah. And what's your relationship like with the manager? Because I think when you came in, he was all telling us, you know, what an unbelievable player you will be once you get fit and, and start to acclimatise mm -hmm. to the division. Has, how has he sort of take? Has he taken you to one side to try and improve your game tactically? Yeah, in the, in the beginning, it was a lot of uh, with the new uh, patterns of play and uh, the fitness wise. In the beginning. Uh, he helped me a lot with, with, with those kind of things. Where I think uh, as the time went on, uh, he started to see some improvements and he he started to like uh, acknowledge that and saying good comments and that also does a lot of my confidence. So well, we have a good relationship and if he plays me, I'm happy. So yeah. <laughs> like all players. Listen, Ruben, thank you very much and best of luck for the weekend. Thanks, Lee. John, have you got anything for Ruben? You have your mute, Mike. You have the mute on, uh, John. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, I'm fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, as, as the lads have been saying, you moved from uh, Dutch football to English football. Um, has anything about the National League surprised you in any way? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, because not that I was like uh, thinking easy, but the quality that players have here are still like 
similar to the second division we have in the Netherlands. So, and I wasn't expecting that. So that is uh, something that surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you said there that also you you had quite a few months to to catch up on from from not playing. How how close now do you think you are to uh, you know the best you can be at Notts County? Uh, I think like like I said again to Lee, like I'm still at still not there because I still feel like a little uh, tired when I am at the 80th 85 minute. So but I'm like at 90 percent of my fitness level and. I hope I can uh, produce every game like last Tuesday. So yeah, yeah. Um, look, looking at, looking ahead, there's a there's a, an amazingly hectic schedule. Um, presuming that the the league does continue and reach its conclusion, do you feel um, that you and the rest of the group are looking forward to that, or is it a, is it a daunting prospect to play so many games in such a short period of time? Yeah, yeah. I think also because every lo everybody likes to play, uh, everybody prefers playing instead of training. So I think at least I'm looking forward to it because I always like to play. Uh, I think the team is ready. We have a lot of good substitutions as well. We have like 18 amazing players. So I think uh, those double fixtures a week won't uh, won't hurt us. And every every opponent will have double fixtures as well. So it's not an excuse for us. So yeah, I think I think it's a good thing. And you've got a very important game, obviously coming up on, uh, on Saturday. Any any thoughts on going to to Wrexham? Nah, uh, nah, just play the way we played like like Tuesday, and we win against every team. So <laughs> that's the mentality now.